They say that money is the root of all evil and that you don't really know a person until money is involved. Well, that rings true in this case of the deranged boy that killed his childhood friend and made her body disappear just for money. On December 3rd, 2016, at around 2 a.m., the police received a call from an Uber driver reporting that there was an abandoned car on a bridge in Belmar, New Jersey. When the police arrived, they found that the car was unlocked and the keys were still in the ignition. There was nothing wrong with it, so why did the driver leave it here? Their first thought was that maybe the driver jumped off the bridge. But as they continued to investigate, they learned that something more sinister happened. When the investigators ran the plates, they learned that the car belonged to a 96-year-old lady by the name of Lillian Stern. They called Lillian and she informed them that the car was mostly used by her 19-year-old granddaughter, Sarah Lee Stern. Sarah was born on March 24th, 1997 to Carla and Michael Stern. She grew up in Neptune City and graduated from Neptune High School, where she was described as kind, smart, athletic, and a talented artist. According to her friends, Sarah was always happy and optimistic. She would often encourage others to be themselves, and her favorite quote was, practice reckless optimism. Sarah was super close with her dad, Michael, and when her mom died of cancer during her freshman year of high school, the bond with her dad became even tighter. Sarah also had two best friends, Liam McAtasney and Preston Taylor. Sarah and Liam met in middle school, and they instantly became friends. They bonded over their love of movies, video games, and comic books. Sarah saw Liam as someone she could trust and confide in. And when her mom died, Liam was there to support and console her. Although Preston was not as close to Sarah as Liam, he was also a good friend and was even Sarah's date to the junior prom. Liam and Preston became friends in high school and continued to be friends after graduating. They even got an apartment together. After high school, Sarah continued to pursue her love of art by enrolling in Brookdale Community College, where she studied video and art production. She dreamed of working in Toronto, Canada as a professional artist. Now, after finding her car abandoned, investigators started asking around town if anyone had seen her, and they learned that Liam was the last person to be seen with her. When investigators went to ask Liam, he said that he and Sarah spent the afternoon together before he went to work at 4.30 p.m., and they haven't talked since. He claimed that Sarah had been having issues with her dad and that she had been talking about going away to Canada. Over the past few months, she's been telling me how uh, bad her relationship with her father is and how she just needs to get out of here. Sarah's dad, who is on vacation in Florida, was called and told that Sarah was missing, and he immediately knew something was wrong. His mother had called him earlier to tell him that Sarah was not replying to her calls. Michael knew his daughter loved her grandmother and would never ignore her calls. He started texting Sarah asking where she was and why her phone was off, but he never got any response. When the police told him where they'd found the car that Sarah was driving, a lot of things crossed his mind. Did the car break down and Sarah left it there? Or maybe she was abducted. Could she have jumped? He quickly dismissed the last thought because he remembered the last time he had spoken to Sarah, she was okay and showed no signs of being depressed. The police launched a massive air and sea search for Sarah that included local and county agencies, the New Jersey State Police, and the U.S. Coast Guard. Dozens of volunteers searched nearby coastal towns for weeks without success. With nothing else to go on, investigators decided to talk to Liam again and get more information about Sarah's state of mind before she disappeared. Liam was very cooperative with the police and willingly told them everything they wanted to know. He repeated his first statement that Sarah and her dad were not getting along and that she might have run away to Canada. He then added that Sarah had once talked about hurting herself. In the past, she has had a tendency to have self-destructive suicidal behavior. I actually know that- How long ago? 
years ago. However, after talking to Sarah's dad, investigators learned that although he and his daughter would disagree at times, they actually had a normal, loving father-daughter relationship. So investigators found Liam's claims a bit suspicious. But before they could interview Liam any further, his parents got him a lawyer who advised him to stop talking. Without Liam, investigators turned to his roommate, Preston, hoping that maybe Liam could have told him something that could help in the case. But Preston repeated everything Liam had said, and the investigators asked him what he thought happened to Sarah. And his reply really took them by surprise. I think she jumped. Okay, why do you think she jumped? Just from the stories that I've heard about what goes on with her and her dad. A month into the investigation, the police were yet to find any leads to explain Sarah's strange disappearance. Despite having searched everywhere for her body, they had still come up with nothing. At this point, they had also ruled out the possibility that Sarah might have hurt herself because everyone they had talked to except Liam and Preston maintained that she was in a good mood and could not have hurt herself. Then, in January 2017, a guy by the name of Anthony Curry, who was a former classmate of Liam, Preston, and Sarah, went to the police and told them something that would really turn the case around. He said that on Thanksgiving of 2016, days before Sarah disappeared, Liam had confided in him that Sarah found some money in a house owned by her family. He then revealed how he planned to kill her and take the money. He would throw Sarah's remains over a bridge and leave her car there so it would look like she jumped. And then Preston would drive the escape car. Anthony was a filmmaker and was always looking for ideas for his next film. He and Liam had often discussed horror movie plots in the past, so he thought that his friend was just pitching a fictional story. He had no idea that Liam was actually relaying a real murder plan. Anthony learned about Sarah's disappearance on social media, and Liam started calling him every day saying that they needed to talk. He asked him if the cops had questioned him about the disappearance, and this was when Anthony knew that something more serious was going on and decided to go to the police. When investigators heard all this, they asked Anthony if he would help them get a confession from Liam, and he readily agreed. He was to meet up with Liam and ask him about Sarah while secretly recording him. Although Liam already knew that the police were on to him, he agreed to meet up with Anthony, but before he entered Anthony's car, he asked him if he could feel him up for a wire. Anthony agreed, knowing that the recording devices were actually hidden inside the car and not on him. Satisfied that his friend was not setting him up, Liam confessed everything, giving gory details of how he committed the horrific crime. And I've got to warn you guys, this footage is super disturbing to listen to. She was, when he, when he went to the bank, she took some money out, not all of her money. We're counting it out, and then she goes to walk out the front door. I her out, drag her. My biggest problem was the dog, and her dog laid there and watched as I killed her. Didn't do anything. He went on to give graphic details of how he did it, saying that he had even timed the whole thing on his phone so that he could still show up to work and secure an alibi. I picked her up and had her just like dangling off the ground, and she just herself, and she lost control of her name, and then that was it. And she was just laying there having a seizure or something. He said that it took him half an hour to take her life, and then he left and went to work as if nothing happened. After work, he came back to dispose of Sarah's remains with the help of his roommate Preston, who he had offered to give a 30% cut. He said that he had been planning this for six months, and he expected to find at least 100 k from the money that Sarah had found. But instead, he got $10,000, old and brittle notes that were basically useless. Part of it is, I thought I was working out 50 grand, 100 grand in my pocket. She had one safe, and she took money out, and she only had 10 grand. It's really heartbreaking to imagine that Sarah really trusted these two monsters and considered them to be her friends. When Anthony asked Liam if he regretted what he did, he said that he didn't feel any different and didn't think much about it. 
After this confession, Liam was arrested and charged with multiple charges, including first-degree homicide, tampering with evidence, conspiracy, and desecrating human remains. Preston was also charged with hindering apprehension, robbery, and desecrating human remains. He pleaded guilty and agreed to testify against Liam for a reduced sentence of 18 years in prison. He said that Liam had told him that Sarah, and I quote, had the type of money that somebody would kill for, and that he planned to get Sarah drunk and get the money left to her by her mother. Preston admitted that he had helped Liam dump Sarah over the bridge for a cut of the money and showed investigators every place they went that day before disposing of Sarah's remains. We pulled her out and he picked her up to start dragging her. I grabbed her legs and got her over to the fence. Everyone was shocked by this turn of events, as they never imagined that Sarah's childhood friends would be capable of hurting her for money. Liam's mother strongly defended her son, saying in an interview on ABC's 2020 that there was no way Liam could have hurt Sarah because he loved her way too much. I do not believe that. In every bone of my body, I do not believe that Liam is capable of killing Sarah, who he loved and adores. During Liam's trial, his taped confession was submitted as key evidence since Sarah's remains were never found. The defense tried to have it thrown out, saying that it was a false confession and that Liam was auditioning for a role in Anthony's movie. But the jury didn't buy it, and they found Liam guilty of all charges. He was later sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. What makes this really, uh, really a heinous event that these were two people, meaning Sarah and Liam, that knew each other since, I believe, grammar school. So on count one, murder in the first degree, it's life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. After the sentencing, Sarah's heartbroken dad said he believed his daughter got the justice she deserved. It's been a long two and a half years for this journey. I think finally we got justice for Sarah. I love my daughter. And everybody else did too. She's a good kid, she was a talented artist. She was a rising star. Her life ended way too soon. What do you think about this case? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more.